Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be talking about the yeast of the Pharisees. Right now, we're on Luke chapter 12, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 3. Meanwhile, when a multitude of many thousands had gathered together, so much so that they trampled on each other, he began to tell his disciples, first of all, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. I'm going to stop there for a minute. In the scriptures, there are lots of different references to yeast, okay? Yeast uh, is, a, is a symbol of, um, of, of pride. Least, yeast, excuse me, is a leavening agent, which means it causes the dough to rise. It causes, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into too much of the scientific part of it, but it causes dough to rise because it gets filled with carbon dioxide, okay? Or uh, some people might say it gets filled with like air bubbles. So um, if you have, let's say... Um, Let's say you have a, a brick, so-called, of bread, okay? And that brick is not leavened. There's no yeast in it whatsoever. There's no other leavening agent whatsoever. That's going to be very heavy, so to speak, okay? Relatively speaking, it's going to be a very solid loaf of bread. But if you have a brick, that same size brick, that has yeast in it, that has been, uh, you know, has yeast or any other leavening agent in it, and has been leavened, that is going to be a whole lot lighter, and it's going to be a whole lot more fragile. And so yeast causes the dough to be puffed up, okay? That's why yeast is a symbol of pride. Uh, it makes it look bigger than it really is. You know, and people who are uh, very proud people are people who make themselves look better or bigger than they really, really are, okay? A lot of times people put on a facade of pride just because they want to cover up the fragility or the, uh, when I say the frivolity of really who they really are. Um, people who are humble are people who are very secure in who they really are. They're not looking for attention. They're not looking to make people believe that they're better than they are. Um, they are secure in who they are. People who are proud are people who they don't, they don't want to be told that they're wrong. Okay, they don't want to be told that what they're doing uh, or something about them is not right, not good. Uh, they don't want to listen to others. They impose themselves on, 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 excuse me, impose themselves on others. Okay, so pride is uh, really is a leavening agent in the soul. Okay. Pride is, is something that puffs you up, uh, whereas humility is something that keeps you unleavened. It, it's, you're a lot more of a heavier person, so to speak, in, you know, uh, in many different ways. I'm not talking about biologically or physically. I'm talking about like mentally or emotionally, uh, soulishly, really, too. I mean, about your real character is that you are not a lightweight, okay? You are a heavyweight person. Uh, you are a very sober person. That is a humble person, okay? A proud person, on the, other, on the other hand, is usually a lightweight person, someone who is easily offended, someone who easily gets angry, uh, someone who doesn't like to be told that they're wrong, someone who cannot admit that they are wrong. Uh, but a humble person is the opposite. A humble person is someone who admits when they're wrong, who wants to listen, who says, always says within themselves, I could be wrong. You know, I want to listen. I want to learn. Whereas a proud person pretends to know more than they really do. So a proud person covers up a lot. They cover up a lot by their pride. Okay, they cover up a lot 
because of their pride, they cover up who they really are underneath, the monster that they really are underneath. Whereas a humble person doesn't cover themselves up like that. They expose themselves, okay? Uh, they expose their wrongs. They expose their sins. Not with a bad attitude. Not, not with saying, hey, look at me, I'm a sinner. No, but no, hey, hey, I, I've got, um, mis I made mistakes. I've got uh, things in me that uh, is not good. And I'm working on it. And I, and I want to get rid of it, okay? That's a humble person. So Jesus said, beware of the yeast, the leavening agent of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. See, everybody who is proud, I mean, you know, people who are proud people are hypocrites. I mean, they because they're they're not honest with themselves, they're not honest with others. They believe their own lies, okay? The, uh, hypocrisy just means basically to pretend. A hypocrite is a pretender. You pretend like you're like uh, you're better than you are. You pretend like you're bigger and badder than you really are. A hypocrite is a pretender. Hypocrisy is pretense, okay? There's a lot of pretense even within the church, okay? There's a lot of people even, especially, now let's, let me talk about the charismatic uh, Pentecostal, so-called charismatic world. Um, there's a lot of presumption. Oh, I, oh, God just spoke to me, you know? And they give out words. There's a lot of people, he, they, they, they talk like they, you know, God spoke to me there. God spoke to me over here. God spoke to me here. Oh, God just spoke to me again. Oh, you know, it's like just something that, and people who really know them, people who really, really know them, know that they have been wrong so many times. It cannot, I mean, they miss it so many times. And if you're honest with yourself, you would, you would admit that it's not really God speaking, but it's more or, less, more or less their own spirit speaking. Read the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah speaks a lot about presumptuous prophets. Okay, that's just all pride. That's pride. That's pride in the church. Pride in the charismatic uh, church, okay? Uh, there's lots more to say about pride, but pride is hypocrisy, okay? Pride, or I should say, pride causes hypocrisy, okay? So beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, the pride, so-called, of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing covered up that will not be revealed, why did Jesus just say that? Why did Jesus hook, put the two together? Because wherever there is hypocrisy, there are people who are covering things up. They got secrets that they never want to be revealed. They got secrets that they even don't even want God to know sometimes. They got secrets that they're covering up. So that is what is feeding the yeast of the Pharisees. You know, if you're a baker, you know that yeast is fed by water and in a certain amount of sugar and, you know, just a certain amount of different, you know, ingredients. And that's what feeds the yeast. Well, in this, in this instance, yeah, sugar, the sweetness, the overly sweet stuff, you know, always wanting to hear uh, good prophecies or picking... Uh, you know, cherry picking the scriptures for the good verses and leaving the other uh, not so pretty verses alone. Uh, that just again that you are you are creating hypocrisy. You are covering up something. You are pretending that something is not really the way it, you know that it's not really the way it is. Um, so that's why Jesus. First of all, said, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, pride, which is hypocrisy. And then he right away went from there saying, listen, you need to understand, there's nothing covered up that will not be revealed. That means, you know what? You ought to humble yourself. That's basically what Jesus is saying. Nor hidden that will not be known. Okay? Now, you see, God reveals things sometimes immediately, sometimes within minutes, hours, days, weeks, sometimes years, but it will be revealed. It's better 
a lot of, you know, for the most part, it's better things are revealed uh, sooner than later. Um, you want people to be honest and not to be hypocrites to cover up uh, things and uh, hide things from you. Verse 3, Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness, in that room, when you think that nobody else is listening, between you and that one other person, you think it's just a confidential thing that they won't tell anybody? Jesus, okay, you, 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 Hey, if you consider yourself to be a Christian, you need to believe this. And you need to always keep this in mind. Whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light. I mean, if you got the old-fashioned paper, paper in front of you instead of an electronic form, underline the word will. If you got the electronic form, highlight the word will. Okay? Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light. What you have spoken in the ear, in the inner rooms, in other words, you think it's just a secret place you go in this closet and no one else will hear you? Whatever you have spoken in the inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. Wow. You think you were all alone. You think no one else will hear. You think no one else will ever hear. You've got fooled. You just got fooled. You got tricked. Maybe you tricked yourself. Maybe the enemy has tricked you. But the truth is, it will be proclaimed from the housetops. In other words, it will be broadcast. The moral of the story is, be humble. Be humble. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't let the yeast, the leavening, the puffing up get into your soul. Don't let that leavening affect your spirit. Don't let yourself be puffed up above what really is good and right. Be humble. Admit your wrongs. Admit you don't know a lot of things. Listen. Always admit you could be wrong. Admit your sins instead of trying to justify it. Turn to God. Be more concerned about pleasing God than pleasing yourself. You know, scriptures say in, in other places that in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. People are looking for things, for money, for power. You know, they say money, sex, drugs, alcohol. You need to humble yourself. You need to admit that this is a very temporal world and you need to fear God and never forget Stay away from pride. Stay away from the yeast that could infect your soul. This is the teachings of Jesus. The same Jesus that's in all the Bibles all over the world in pretty much every country. And in a lot, if not most, courtrooms in, every, in, in the world as well. This is the word of the Lord. As you go, never forget that you are being watched. The book of Hebrews says that there is a great cloud of witnesses. Say, so what do you mean great cloud of witnesses? It's talking about the angels. It's talking about the saints. It's talking about the spirits of just men made perfect. You can't see them, but they're there. Every once in a while, God will open the eyes of someone to see. Think about Gehazi. When... Um, when uh, he was, his eyes were open and he saw the great army of God that he didn't even know existed before. Think about Balaam, or Balaam. He didn't see the angel, but the donkey did. May God open the eyes of your understanding and humble you, 
keep you humble because that is the that's where the gold is that's where the riches are don't be deceived don't partake of the yeast of the pharisees which is hypocrisy thank you